So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a clue that I believe everyone including myself missed during the earliest search efforts for Nicola Bully. Firstly, let's take a look back at an interview which was conducted with Kev Camplin, the leader of Boland Pennine Mountain Rescue, who were actually the first search team on site the day that Nicola Bully disappeared. The following newspaper article is from the 31st of January 2023, and it states the following. An old country house opposite where missing mum Nicola Bully's phone was found has been searched by its owner, according to the leader of a search and rescue team. The 45-year-old vanished while on a dog walk on Friday morning next to the River Wire off Garstang Road, with a large-scale police search launched. Her mobile phone was found on a bench along a river path, which was still logged into a work conference call. It comes after police confirmed today they have tracked down a potentially key witness. It is understood Nicola had dropped her two young children off at St Michael's on Wire Primary School and left her car parked nearby, before going on the walk with Spaniel Willow, which is something she is said to do regularly. Kev Camplin of Boland Pennine Mountain Rescue led a team of 25 trained volunteers on the day Nicola went missing. He said they scoured a long stretch of the river, including wooded areas, water margins and the grounds of a large country house which they initially believed to be abandoned. Speaking to the newspaper, he said, quote, The abandoned house is right opposite the bench on the other side of the river, over a 10-foot garden wall. We didn't go into the house. As a volunteer search and rescue team, we don't actually go into buildings. We might go into a barn or something. We leave that to the police. While the team was searching the grounds, the owner was there for some reason and we asked him to go in and have a quick look around, and she wasn't there. The team made use of equipment including a pickup truck that tows a trailer carrying flotation devices. One of their Land Rovers, which stores medical kits, broke down during the search. All the volunteers carry mountain rescue radios and are coordinated by an operator inside a control van with mapping systems. Kev said his team was contacted at around midday on Friday and he was at the search site within an hour before they left at around 8pm. We probably searched a mile north upstream and then we probably searched three miles downstream, he explained. He said his team only gets called out to quote high-risk cases that are not considered dangerous, for example suspected criminals on the run. We only go to despondents and suicidal cases and people with dementia and people who are generally lost, he said. She drops her kids off at St Michael's and then apparently she walks eastwards to where the woods and the river are. She walks that daily with her dog, said Kev. So it's not an unknown area for her, and it is quite popular for walkers and dog walkers alike. It's actually quite a beautiful spot. Leaving the phone on the bench and then disappearing, it is quite odd. We don't normally get that, he continued. Sometimes we go to a search classed as a lowland search. You do get a car where somebody has left their car, that's the initial planning point. But her car was at the school, and her phone was the initial planning point. Later we found out she was on a team's work call. We didn't know that on Friday. I knew the phone was there, but not on a work call. He said once his team had covered the specified areas they've identified, there's not much more they can do. We probably did more than we normally do because of the circumstances. We put the extra miles in. But once we've done our areas, there's no need to really stay, so we just pack up and go, he explained. The team has since been on call, knowing they may get mobilised by police later in the search. He said they were joined by members of the public who wanted to help and he sent them to low-risk areas. Then, on his way back in the dark, he came across two couples with torches who were searching the riverbank. Asked if untrained volunteer searchers are a help, he said they can be a hindrance but the locals searching for Nicola appear well organised. Speaking generally, he said, quote, To be honest, they get in the way because we do search professionally. Although we are volunteers, we have quite a rigorous training programme, as you can imagine. Mountain rescue, medicines, digging rescue, water rescue, crime scene. We do all that sort of training. OK, so this piece of information here, this newspaper article, is actually incredibly important information. Now, most of us who have followed the Nicola Bully case are under the impression that the first time that higher risk or a suicidal person was mentioned or even alluded to 
was in a later press conference held by Rebecca Smith. But that is not the case. This is, as I say, an interview with a member of Pennine Mountain Rescue. And it's very interesting here where he states the following. He said his team only gets called out to, quote, high-risk cases that are not considered dangerous. For example, suspected criminals on the run. He then says, we only go to despondents and suicidal cases and people with dementia and people who are generally lost. So could it be that the clues were here the entire time? The entirety of this investigation, particularly as stated in this newspaper article here, just four days after Nicola went missing, there's the mention there, high risk, possible suicidal cases. These individuals, Pennine Mountain Rescue, only get called out for a certain set of circumstances, which include despondence and suicidal cases and people with dementia, high risk cases. It's also imperative to remember that these individuals were there within around an hour. So the call gets made at around midday and they're there at around 1pm, the day that Nicola went missing. He then states, we probably searched a mile north upstream and then we probably searched probably three miles downstream, he explained. So that's very interesting. We're not talking about someone who is looking for her four days later and now she's classed as a high-risk person. These individuals, these 25 volunteers, were aware that this was a high-risk case from the outset, from the very first hour in which Nicola was reported missing. And most importantly there, the area which has been searched. We probably searched a mile north upstream, and then we probably searched probably three miles downstream, he explained. So they actually went three miles past the bench and past the weir area, which does leave the very obvious question, doesn't it? Where was Nicola during that time period? So let's just go back and focus on when these individuals became aware of Nicola Bully and Nicola Bully, the missing person. It states the following here. Kev said the team was contacted at around midday on Friday. So Friday is the 27th, just to make that clear. The 27th, the day that Nicola went missing, they were contacted at around midday. And he was at the search site within an hour before they left at around 8pm. So a massive amount of resources were put into this missing person inquiry at the very earliest opportunity. A lot of area was covered during the first few hours of Nicola's disappearance. And this is really something that is stuck with me. How did they not find Nicola during these initial searches? He even mentions further on, I'm just going to scroll down this article here just to find the exact wording. But they talk about going the extra mile because this was obviously a very important case. It was a high-risk missing person. And yes, it states the following here. We probably did more than we normally do because of the circumstances. We put the extra miles in. But once we've done our areas, there's no really need for us to stay. So we just pack up and go, he explained. So this tells us they were there very, very early on. As I just said earlier, they weren't there two or three days later and they're looking, they're behind the eight ball at this point in time. No, they were there within an hour of being called. So it's around midday, just after midday, they were there in the water looking for Nicola Bully. 25 volunteers from Pennine Mountain Rescue. Now what confuses me is that we're not talking about some vast expanse of water here, you know, half a mile wide. This is a very narrow river, which is incredibly slow moving, particularly where the bench is located. So I can't for the life of me explain where Nicola was. Where did Nicola go. If she wasn't by the bench, if she wasn't past the weir location, bearing in mind they've stated here we searched three miles downstream. So really two miles past where her body was eventually found and then back again and then one mile north upstream toward the upper field location. Quite an amount, quite a large area has been covered here just on the first evening of her disappearance. It even states there they started at around midday and they didn't finish until 8pm that evening. So at least seven hours worth of searching took place in the water for Nicola Bully during the first day of her disappearance. 
Now, the point behind this video is not so much to push the idea of Nicola being this suicidal individual who took her own life, but to draw attention to the fact that there were clues here in terms of the police investigation and the direction in which that investigation took at a very early stage. Because a lot of people take a look at this case. They look at the press conferences, particularly the later one by Rebecca Smith, and they say to themselves, well, hang on a minute, you're now talking about this lady who's uh, a vulnerable person, a high-risk individual, someone who may have suffered some past issues with the perimenopause or even alcohol. You're giving us the impression that this person may have taken their own life, yet for the entirety of this investigation, this hasn't been mentioned once, and a lot of people are naturally very suspicious about that. But as I say, interestingly here, in this newspaper article, the clues were given as early as three or four days into the search for Nicola, the fact that Pennine Mountain Rescue, people who are only called in for high-risk missing people, and oftentimes for people who are suicidal. So the clues were there at a very early stage. And I'm not saying that this is why they were there and it was clear that this was a, an individual who walked into the water by their own choice. What I'm saying is that it's clear where the police investigation was going as early as the very first day that Nicola disappeared. I mean, for me personally, when we try and put the pieces of this puzzle together for one moment on the face of it, let's just say that these individuals are in the water around about three hours after Nicola Bully went missing. Let's just say that as a ballpark, three hours after Nicola Bully vanishes. They've searched three miles downstream, they've searched one mile upstream, and they haven't found Nicola Bully. And this is what I can't get my head around. Seven hours of searching on day one. No Nicola Bully. Seven hours of searching in the water. And they talk about that there. They haven't just searched the river location. They've searched the woodland. They've searched the riverbanks. But most importantly, they've been in the water, 25 volunteers, for seven hours on the first day that she vanishes. And there's no Nicola Bully. I think a lot of people may have had the idea, well, maybe she went in the river and she was caught in some kind of reeds or she was submerged somewhere and they, she couldn't be found. But I just can't see that being a possibility. So anyway, hopefully this video can go some way to demonstrating the police's lines of inquiry during the earliest possible opportunity. I know some people at home are going to say, well, really, it depends what the police are told. I mean, you could ring up the police and say, my friend is highly depressed. They've had this issue, that issue. They've told me they're going to take their life. And it may well be classed as a high-risk individual. And, I, you know, I can't discount that as being a possibility. And that's not really something I'm here to argue in this particular video. It's just to really, I guess, reiterate where the police were headed during the early stage of the search for Nicola Bully. It wasn't just a case of, OK, we're going to keep all lines of inquiry open. It would appear here that they've literally just jumped straight from the phone call to, OK, this is a high-risk missing person and, po and possibly someone who was going to take their own life. That's, my, that's the way I perceive it myself. Now, anyway, before I conclude today's video, I have noticed some other videos popping up online recently. And I feel that they are literally just classed as misinformation, to be perfectly honest. I'm not going to name any names, but there is a channel out there that's creating content and they are basically slandering the friends of Nicola Bully. They're talking about altercations and, you know, making up, basically making up fictitious stories just for the sake of creating content. Now, what I plan to do with this case is go back, take a look at every single piece of source material that I can find and piece together as best I can what took place during the first day of Nicola Bully going missing all the way until she was eventually found. I think, you know, there's no need for people to be spinning stories or talking about altercations and this happened and that happened when really we're kind of in the dark at this point regarding this case. I want to solely focus mainly on the facts with a little bit of theory thrown in as I do with the majority of my videos. But as I say, that's what I plan to do next is really go back from day one to the day that Nicola was discovered and go through every single piece of source material, newspaper material, uh, media reports, interviews, and also take a look online 
as to what other people's thoughts were during the search for Nicola Bully. I think that's also quite interesting. But anyway, those videos are to come over the next couple of weeks, so do look out for those. And as always, if you are interested in this case in particular, you will see the Nicola Bully playlist in front of you very shortly. And as always, many thanks for joining me for this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.